What if I told you that you could teach AI to perform any specific image editing task you can imagine? Remove objects, change styles, refine skin. And I'm not talking about basic filters. I'm talking about training your own custom AI model that understands exactly what you want it to do. Hey everyone, if you've been following along with my AI content, you know I'm passionate about pushing the boundaries of what's possible with image generation. Today, we're exploring something that's been a total obsession of mine lately, and I have a feeling it's going to become yours too. We're diving deep into training custom Flux Context LoRa's, and trust me, by the end of this video, you're going to have a completely new perspective on what's possible with AI image editing. Now, before we get into the training process, let's talk about why this matters. You're probably already familiar with Flux Context, Black Forest Labs, incredible tool that lets you edit images using text descriptions. It's honestly one of the most impressive releases we've seen in the AI space. The beauty of Flux Context lies in its ability to create composable scenes with multiple images. You can literally describe what you want to change and it handles the complex editing for you. But here's where things get interesting and where most people hit a wall. Even though Flux Context is the open source version of more powerful paid models like Context Max and Context Pro, it still has limitations. Think about it. The base model is trained on general data, which means it might not understand your specific style preferences or the particular type of edits you find yourself doing over and over again. Maybe you're constantly working with portrait photography and need consistent skin refinement. Or perhaps you're an architectural photographer who frequently needs to remove specific objects from scenes. The base model might get you 70% of the way there, but what about that final 30% that makes the difference between amateur and professional results? This is exactly why custom training was developed for Flux Context. Instead of hoping the model understands your vision, you can literally teach it to perform exactly the tasks you need with the quality standards you demand. The training process is similar to creating a regular Flux LoRa, but it requires a completely different approach to dataset preparation. And that's what we're going to master today. I want you to think of this as creating a specialized assistant that understands your unique workflow. When I trained my first Flux Context LoRa for skin refinement, the results were so impressive that I immediately knew this was something I had to share with all of you. But before we jump into the technical details, I'm curious, what kind of LoRa would you want to train? Drop your ideas in the comments below because I'm always looking for new training projects to tackle. Who knows? Your suggestion might become my next tutorial and I'll definitely give you credit for the inspiration. Some of my most successful projects have come from your suggestions. All right, let's talk strategy. You have two main paths for training your Flux Context LoRa, and your choice depends on your setup and budget. First option, local training. If you have a robust GPU, and I mean really robust, you can train everything on your own machine. This gives you complete control over the process and means you're not paying per training session. However, it requires significant technical setup and computational resources. Second option, cloud-based training through services like FAL AI. This is honestly what I recommend for most people, especially if you're just getting started. It's more straightforward, you don't need to worry about GPU specifications, and you can get results without the technical headaches. We're gonna walk through both methods so you can choose what works best for your situation. Here's where the magic happens and where most people get confused. The key to successful flux context training lies in understanding the start versus end image concept. Let me break this down with a practical example. Let's say you want to train Allura for object removal. Your start image contains the object you want to remove and your end image shows the same scene with the object seamlessly removed. The crucial part, and this is where I see people make mistakes, 
is that you should only change the specific element you're targeting. Don't mess with the background, lighting or other elements unless that's explicitly part of your training goal. When I created my skin refinement Laura, I actually used a reverse engineering approach that worked brilliantly. I started with professionally retouched images as my end result, then used the regular flux model to create slightly degraded versions as my start images. It sounds backwards, but it created perfect training pairs that taught the model exactly what refinement meant. The possibilities are endless here. Animator realistic conversions, specific photo effects, background replacements, style transfers, anything where you can create clear before and after comparisons. You can prepare your data set using various tools. Photoshop is the obvious choice for manual editing, but don't overlook using Flux itself to generate training pairs. Sometimes the most effective data sets come from creative combinations of manual editing and AI generation. Once you have your concept figured out, the preparation process is straightforward, but requires attention to detail. You need to save your images in specific pairs with a clear naming convention. One start PNG and one end PNG. Then continue this pattern throughout your entire dataset. This naming convention isn't just for organization, it's how the training software identifies which images belong together. I learned this the hard way when my first training failed because I used inconsistent naming. Don't make the same mistake I did. The quality of your dataset directly impacts the quality of your trained model. I typically aim for at least 20 to 30 HI quality pairs, but I've seen excellent results with as few as 15 pairs if they're really well curated. Let's start with the easier path, FAL AI. The process is surprisingly straightforward, which is why I recommend it for beginners. You'll upload your image pairs and write the prompt that activates your LoRa. This is where you get creative with your trigger phrases. For my skin refinement Laura, I used something like enhance and refine the skin texture in this portrait. The key is making it descriptive enough to be clear, but flexible enough to work with various inputs. Each situation requires a specific prompt approach. Object removal might use seamlessly remove the object type from this image, while style transfer could be transform this image into your specific style. The exact wording depends on what you're trying to achieve. After uploading and writing your prompt, you'll select the number of training steps. More images typically require more steps, but there's a sweet spot where additional training doesn't improve results. I usually start with the recommended settings and adjust based on the results. One critical detail that trips up many people. Make sure you select the Comfy UI version at the bottom of the Context Trainer page. If you forget this step, you won't be able to run your trained model in Comfy UI, which defeats the entire purpose. FAL AI handles the training and provides you with a model link. You simply download it, place it in your LoRa folder, and load it in your Flux Context workflow. The entire process usually takes a few hours and you'll receive notifications when it's complete. For those with robust GPUs who want complete control, local training offers more flexibility but requires more technical knowledge. You'll need to install T2 iTrainer and download the required models. The process is detailed but manageable if you follow the steps carefully. First, make sure you have the system requirements covered, and I mean really check them. You must have Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable installed. This isn't optional. The trainer simply won't run without it. Download the version that matches your computer specs, whether that's Intel or AMD. I've seen too many people skip this step and wonder why everything breaks later. Next, clone the repository and run the setup.bat file. If this fails, and sometimes it does, don't panic. 
there's a manual installation option that involves creating a virtual environment and installing components like Torch, Torch Vision, and Torch Audio individually. It's more work, but it gives you better control over the process. Hardware requirements are serious here. You need an NVIDIA GPU with CUDA 12.1 minimum. I'm running CUDA 12.8 and it works perfectly, but don't try to cut corners with older versions. The model downloads require significant storage space. You don't need every model, just download the context version for this specific training. Plan your storage accordingly because these files are substantial. Before starting training, verify your folder structure matches the requirements. The trainer uses an NF4 version of the model, which uses less VRAM but requires specific setup. Make sure this matches your system specifications. Launch the trainer using run slider with ven.bat or if you prefer manual control, activate the virtual environment and run the command python ui flux fill.py. Copy the URL link into your browser to access the Gradio interface. The T2i trainer uses a different dataset format than FAL AI, so pay attention to the documentation. Your training dataset requires a folder for each image, and image pairs must include specific suffixes T for training images and R for reference images. In the LoRa configuration, you can adjust the rank from 16 to 32 if your GPU supports it. Higher ranks can capture more detail, but require more VRAM. The learning rate and other options are pre-optimized, but you can experiment based on your specific needs. Once training completes, you'll receive a file to place in your Comfy UI LoRa folder. This is where the real excitement begins, testing your custom model. Load your trained LoRa in your Flux context workflow and start experimenting. The first few tests will tell you immediately whether your training was successful. Don't be discouraged if the first attempt isn't perfect. Even experienced practitioners rarely get it right on the first try. Pay attention to how the model responds to different prompts and image types. Sometimes a LoRa trained on portraits works beautifully on close-ups, but struggles with full body shots. Understanding these limitations helps you refine your approach for future training sessions. Training custom flux context LoRas opens up possibilities that simply don't exist with standard models. Whether you choose the convenience of cloud training or the control of local setup, you're essentially creating AI tools that understand your specific creative vision. I'm genuinely excited to see what you create with these techniques. The AI community thrives on shared knowledge and experimentation, so please share your results, challenges, and breakthroughs in the comments below. What type of LoRa are you planning to train? Are you leaning toward cloud or local training? I read every comment and often feature the most interesting projects in future videos. Your experiments might inspire the next tutorial topic. If you found this helpful, you know what to do. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more cutting edge AI content. I'm constantly exploring new techniques and tools, and there's always something exciting on the horizon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll explore advanced prompting techniques for custom LoRa's. Until then, happy training.